seeing I'm seeing correlation between distances, the sites that have been set up to around 5,000 kilometers. Uh, yeah. And then the further you move into towards, it actually it's an even, the, there'll still be correlation, even the sites that will be far below, but then way beyond the Morans. Yeah, way beyond the Moran's index. Mm. Mm hmm Anyone else? <laughs> so I think the size that size that are similar, that are closer, sorry. <laughs> are more similar um, and then as you move further away it becomes dissimilar and then it becomes random. At which distance it becomes? 13,000 plus. 13,000 plus. Maybe mm -hmm. 14,000. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about the distance 8,000? Yes, at 8,000, yeah, it's dissimilar. It's dissimilar. Yeah. For example, look at the map. I don't know if, how much you are familiar with the scale in the New World, but what do you expect to get to a pair of sight that are 8,000 kilometers away? What is 8,000 there? <laughs> and why are they dissimilar? Well, there could be a, maybe two reasons. So suppose one of them is in the Amazonia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Any guess where 8,000 will be? from there? 8,000 kilometers? <laughs> yeah. You see why it's dissimilar? Yeah, so... It would also imply similarities in a potential area. That not, it's not in the map itself, but off the map, probably some site in Ghana, mm -hmm. you can get that particular environment that is almost close to what is in in in, in South America, mm -hmm. and that would also that for me, I see this. I can fold that map at that point close to zero at the four thousand, and when you look at it this way, it 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 forms a V. It means at that particular point, the the variables are just inverse of the other, but then the similarities for those sites are the ones which are viable mm -hmm. to make a conclusion from this map. Then beyond that, it becomes a bell curve on the, on the lower side, the, compared, that is the Moran's index. So that one doesn't really, it, it does not affect the interpretation of the data there. Really? Yeah. Mm, I may disagree. I would, I would tend to to state that beyond this 8,000 unit distance, I will tend not to not to be very comfortable with the Moran index. Really? Yes. yes. Why is that? Because it's, I think that finish is cough and is now beginning another cough, okay, the which may not fit into this particular analysis. Well, Let's think of what 13,000 mean here. So 13,000 for this, this scale is probably something that is this large, or I don't know. Larger? Something like this. And why is Morenzi close to zero at that scale? Because sometimes 
you may be comparing the, sul, the south of Argentina with maybe US? Would that be 13,000? Uh, that may be a little similar. Not? No? But let's move a little bit upwards. Is that similar? So, it, I, I really think that this more insight here is pretty meaningful. It tells me that things that are that distant apart may or may not be similar. On the other hand, when I think of 8,000, I usually get things that are pretty dissimilar, right? And when I think of 1,000, they are pretty similar. So I, I really look at this correlogram, and I think it's a good synthesis of the map. Does everybody have something to add, or, or disagree, or, or agree? I'm, I'm sorry, say again? The other dots I can see down and then at the top. Oh, those are the maximum Morenzi value possible for that class. It's that other formula that we, we, I showed you. Hmm? What do you think? You guys want to share with us? <laughs> I was just wondering if the moral I actually descended instead of going up around the 8,000, 9,000. Like it kept coming down. It kept coming down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what would that have meant? Dissimilar. 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 Total. Okay. But remember, I can't go beyond one. Negative one. I'm thinking that if it ended at negative one. But the way he's saying it's going to come to negative 1.5. <laughs> no, no, you have to, I mean, ending at one, minus one, somewhere there. What would that mean? Close, well, the closer the red dots are to the blue dots, the higher the, or, or lower the autocorrelation. I want to ask if it is probably would give a different result or more information if you widen the map and include any other feature that is close to the place because the there's not much close to that. <laughs> <laughs> there is the tip, Cuba. There's not there. You know, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Horn of South America. Which other landmass is within 13,000 meters? 13,000 yes meters from. You may get part of Africa yes, with that uh, scale. The, the, that particular part would have a lot in common in sight. I, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. So if when you when you add more data mm -hmm. in space, yes. you may change your correlogram. That's true. I, I completely agree with that. Uh, so it may change your your definition uh, or, or the Morenzi value you get in the, those last distance classes, yes, it, it will probably will. Yeah, okay. Maybe one way to think about this that will help a bit. <laughs> Where is Kate? <laughs> Maybe one way to think about this is if we're talking about 1,000 kilometer comparisons, Think about creating a bunch of sticks a thousand kilometers long and throwing them on this map. And there are lots and lots and lots of places where they can fall. And some of them will do this. They'll go from a high value to a low value. But most of them are going to go from medium to medium, or low to low, or high to high. Mm -hmm. That's what creates that high value. Once you get your sticks a little bit longer, like 5,000, then more frequently they go between very different values. And once you get out to here, one thing you have to remember is that now there aren't many ways you can orient a stick that long. Like if I put it here, it can only go here or here. Mm -hmm. So notice that your geography is now constraining 
the possible comparisons. And so my interpretation of that 8,000 number is that any place where I can stick one of those lines that long, one end's going to be in the tropics and the other end's going to be in the temperate zone. Mm -hmm. Okay? And my interpretation of this is that we get out things like this and we have almost no play. Mm -hmm. There's almost no difference. Anyhow, I think if you think about how the places that aren't white on that map constrain where those sticks can go, this is going to make a lot more sense. I wish we had a distance standard. <laughs> so the distance is always like this? No. It, it can be in all directions. But long, long, long distances can only be vertical. Like there's n not much 13,000 that is not a little vertical. It's going to be diagonal. But distances are in all directions. So you said we can attach uh, p-values to this Moran's eye. We because, can. Because now what we are doing is to do any, what any other old time statistician could do. Just so okay, it is close, so it is similar. What if that all that we are seeing here came out like that, but none of the p-values is significant? Why okay. is that? No, I assuming we put p values onto each of these distances. I bet there will be almost all of them significant. Okay. Except for one or two there, everything is going to be significant. We we can look at that later. Okay. Okay. Um, let's proceed. Okay. Uh, going back to Town's question, the number of classes have a significant uh, effect on what pattern we will find. Um, if we have kind of a stable or relatively homogeneous uh, domain, it shouldn't be very, very different. But uh, especially with relation to the distance of independence. Here you, we have two classes, and each class is like this big, or this big, and now classes are becoming uh, smaller and smaller, and here even smaller, and now a lot smaller. You see, the patterns uh, the, the overall pattern of the correlogram remains relatively stable. Uh, the independence distance ranges from here between 2 and 2,500. Here is more of a 2,500. Here is around 2,500 as well. This line over here should be crossing around 3,000. So it all depends, well, the, the, the final result you, you get is relatively dependent on your, uh, the number of classes you have, and also how you define classes. And again, this is the correlogram for this map only. It's a single map, same map, and you get ver uh, varying correlograms depending on the classes. Uh, also, we can look at this map over here, that's the map of uh, Brazilian savanna or Brazilian cerrado. And here is the correlogram you get when you have equal number of pairs per class and here equal interval between classes. When you uh, start having more and more classes, these last classes will have very few, very few pairs being compared. And so you can get very unexpected results, very uh, uh, weird results in these last classes. And when you even the number of pairs per class, then you get a more stable correlogram. Of course, this is much more, this is much easier to interpret than this. Okay? Uh, we can go back to that later. Uh, 
Okay, uh, a couple more words about Corellograms. Uh, by looking at the Corellogram, you can not only uh, point to the, in the distance of independence, but also several more additional information that could be very useful to you. Like, what's the decline, or are there patches? Are there long distance differ differentiation? So, for example, look at this pattern or the absence of pattern in this map. Can you see anything here? I can't see anything. And that's the same map on three dimensions. And this is the Corellogram. See? You can look at this Corellogram and imagine this. It's pretty simple. Now, look at this. There is this cline over here, this gradient. It's smooth and continuous. Now, look at this Corellogram. Doesn't it really show this? It does. See, things that are very far apart are really dissimilar. You see that? Okay? So, you get negative Moran's eye. Okay? Now, let's complicate a little. Do you see the pattern? You see how the Corellogram describes the pattern? Do you? 